It's that time of the month when we look at the latest release of Home Assistant. So stick around and we will see what's new in the March release of HA 2023.3. But as always, little bit of disclaimer. This video has been recorded on the beta version of Home Assistant. I try to record those videos as close as I can to the release date. Unfortunately, as we have seen the last month, even the things that reach the beta 5 or beta 6 of Home Assistant release doesn't mean that they will end up in the final release. Also, if you are interested, you yourself can join the beta channel and contribute to the development by testing your system against the future releases. I don't recommend that you do that on your main setup because you may break it, but if you have a test setup, you can do it on a test one. It's very easy. Go to Settings, System, Updates, Three Dots and click on Join Beta Channel. And yes, as easily as you can join the beta channel, you can leave the beta channel and you will not be seeing any future beta releases. So help out the community by testing the betas on your system, not the main system. Home Assistant UI has gone through a lot of changes. And one of the things that people either hated or loved was the changes on how you load some individual components or restart your Home Assistant. Previously we had that in a settings menu, but it has been moved to developers menu. On the other hand, here you can either check the configuration, restart your Home Assistant or load or reload parts of your YAML configuration. Well, actually this release brings something new. We go to Settings, System and we have this power button here. What's new is the ability to quick reload. This will reload all the YAML configuration without restart or restart Home Assistant. And while you are already here, there is a drop-down menu that allows you to access advanced options, such as reboot of the system or system shutdown. Which actually, when I think of, I don't think that I ever used in 4 or 5 years that I've been using Home Assistant. Hmm, strange. Selecting Quick Reload will reload all the YAML files, all the configuration files. And clicking on the Restart Home Assistant will do what it does always. It will check your configuration and restart your system. But that's not all. For all of you that love to play with the automations and services, you can now go to Services and select command Home Assistant Reload All. And this will trigger the same service as would the pressing of the button do. We all know that this year is the year of the voice. And in this release, the assist functionality has been improved. Now we can also get the state values. For example, if the doors, windows, garage doors are open, if there are any lights that are on or off, and how many windows doors are open if, for example, you want to leave the apartment and you want to check out if you need to close something or not. While most of the languages that are currently supported with the assist will be receiving this update, Unfortunately, some will not. And this does not depend on the Home Assist devs, this depends on the community. If you can help with the translation of those intents to your local language. If we, for example, ask what's the state of the front door, front door is locked, in my case, because I'm also using Nuki Smart Lock. And by the way, you can check the video on the Nuki Smart Lock right here. Of course, you can ask some other questions. These are the currently supported has get state commands. But that's not all. If we go to English language, we can see that we have some other get states. For example, for binary sensors, for covers, for locks, etc. There have been a lot of comments or questions about this. Why would you use it? Nobody is forcing you. You do not have to use it. But now you have option to use it. Previously, we were only able to issue commands, such as, for example, turn the light on and off, but we couldn't see what the state of each individual light was. So now you have option to do that. If you prefer using your mobile app, companion app, or your PC, that's up to you. But others now have option to use it too. Remember people, democracy, choice. But let's look at one additional improvement, and that's once again UI. 
If we, for example, go to the settings, integrations, and select a random entity, you will see changes to the UI. Now we have a history graph with the information about the state of the entity, in this case 80% and the graph sitting at 80%. We can see the attributes, but we also have this cog here. By pressing the cog, we are going into submenu. Remember, this is submenu because we now have also arrow back. Here we can change the name, icon, we can play with the precision, and this is something that was supposed to be included in the previous release, but will be included in this release, and all the other stuff that was previously on the same page as the sensor data was, or entity data was. You also have three dots, where you can click and see all the related integrations or automations or whatever is using this entity. And while we are already on the topic of UI changes, let's look at this one here. Indoor camera motion alarm. If we click it, we now have a new dialog that is applied to lights, switches and siren entities. History that was previously visible in the UI is available also in the submenu. We have history, we have cog where we can configure it, and three dots to see related information and device information. Depending on the type of device, we will see a different UI. For example, this is a light, smart light, not just a switch. We can turn it on, we can use glider to set it, and we can also play with the effects, if your device supports it. One thing I mentioned now and also in the previous release notes is the precision. Due to some possible future issues, the last release didn't have included precision changes. But now we do have them, so let's look at them. If we go to integrations, entities and look for some numeric state, for example my Shelly, we see that we can once again select display precision. Display precision allows you to shrink or extend number of decimals that the value of that entity shows. This doesn't influence the data that is recorded. If, for example, the state of the sensor is represented with values with up to 5 decimal points, it will still be recorded in the database, but it will affect what you see in the UI. If all goes well, hopefully this will be included in this release of Home Assist. We've been talking a lot about the UE changes and improvements in this release, and we also had a couple of them in the previous release. If we check one thing more, we can go to Automations, click on Create New Automation, and we will see a new Automation Creation dialog. We can create new automation, but we can also create automations based on blueprints. Blueprints now support author information. In the future, when you pull the new blueprint, if the author has implemented, you will see who the author is. For now, for this one, I have by the community. And these two are created by Home Assistant devs. The rest of the process to create automation is same. If you want to create a new automation that's empty, not based on any blueprint, you just click on Create New Automation. One thing, I will not be wasting my breath. This is thread and matter support. I really am looking for both Thread and Matter to become stable, and I don't mean it in a Home Assistant stable, but a worldwide stable, that more devices support it, that more devices can talk with each other, that more border devices know what to do with the data, and that it all works like, for example, Wi-Fi, Ethernet or Zigbee or Z-Wave are working today. I'm not sure if we are still at that point, so I will not be covering anything related to thread or matter until I see that it works so that any user can use it. No university degree for that one required. Let's look at some of the other noteworthy changes. For example, unit of measurement. If you want to change the display from kilowatts to watts, you can now do that. Let's talk about contributed translations how Home Assistant used to work. For example, in the beta release, we got new introduction to whatever component, device, integration, etc. to the future release. And people had to translate it while the development was still in beta process. If this has been translated before the final release, the translation was included. 
if unfortunately someone missed that window and translated the component to whatever language later on, it would not be picked up until the next full release. This has been fixed, this has been worked on, and now if there is a change to translation, update to translation or new translation, it will be merged and pulled into the next release or patch release. Couple of more noteworthy changes. On with camera now supports autofocus, wiper and ER lights. Of course, if your camera supports it and of course, if your camera speaks on with. SwitchBot blind tilt has been added to the SwitchBot integration. Support for Shelly Pro 3M energy sensors has been added and one of the things that I really do like is the improvements to the Reolink integration. It now provides entities to update the firmware, control zoom and control autofocus. Or in my case, I can use it to focus and zoom on the image. New integrations in this release are Dormakaba D-Key, Easy Energy and TP-Link Omada SDN controller. And no new release would be complete without the breaking changes. The list is long, but not everything is critical. For example, assist or conversations now is improved. Previously, all entities and areas were exposed to assist default agent. Now this is restricted to the following domains. And what's best, it will add only those areas where devices from these domains exist. And that should also improve performance. MQTT has been worked on. And these are not the only changes to the MQTT. From what I remember from our call with the devs, there has also been worked on the engine itself. And the Home Assistant should now load MQTT devices, entities or whatever faster than it used to do. And this more or less wraps up all the new things or changes in this release of Home Assistant. While this may not look as much as in previous release, remember that this release was one week shorter than the previous one. So it was also one week less of time to work on new things or improvements. But I do really like changes to the UI, where everything is going and how everything is looking like. It's especially useful if you are using it on the mobile phone. But one of my favorite things in this release, but also in previous release of Home Assistant, is the Reolink integration. It really has been worked a lot on. I do like Reolink cameras and I did a couple of videos on them. And hopefully I will also be reviewing one Reolink device soon, when it gets back in stock. What are your favorite things in this release of Home Assistant? What do you like or dislike? Do you like the changes to the UI? I really would like to hear your comments. So if you have any comments, ideas, suggestions about this release or previous releases of Home Assistant, leave them down in the comments section below. And don't forget to give this video a like if you did like them. If you didn't like it, express it by giving it a like. And while we are already here, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you do want to support the channel, you can do so by a. becoming a YouTube channel member, b. buying something from the merchandise store, or c. watching and liking my videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video and also notifications about the future streams. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.